so much for joining me today. Thank you, Jill. For a Thanks. cup of tea. Thank you for, for this cup of tea. I'm very grateful for it. We're right. drinking um, peppermint and licorice. Licorice, right? that's right. Yes, it's a vocal tea. So just in case you need a bit of soothing down mm -hmm. there. My voice is about to become very mellifluous. Yeah, mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. You're mm. welcome. Well, thanks for joining me. Drink away. Thank you, I will. I need, I need to hydrate from you know, airplanes and yeah. things. Yeah, well, thanks for coming to our yeah. country to yeah. visit us. My, it's my pl pleasure. It's nice uh, to be back, actually, because I, I, um, I lived in Melbourne when I was like five years old for about five months. I oh, went wow. to... Um, kindergarten there. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, well, well, welcome back. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason you're here is you are in a new movie because you are an actor yeah. and you've you starred in television shows, on the theatre and in films. You've, you're quite a busy little bee. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope to, to stay that way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've seen the movie Ricky and the Flash, it's called, mm -hmm. and we'll talk more about that in a minute for sure. Um, but here on Tea with Jules, we like to delve into the past of people's mm -hmm. lives and, mm -hmm. and see how, I mean, you're obviously a very successful actor and, you know, we love watching what you do, but can you share with us a little bit about your past and your journey and, and where you grew up and how you grew up? Sure. Uh, I grew up primarily in the countryside, about um, two and a half hours north of, of New York City. So East Coast, New England. Um, I had a really, really normal, verging on most of the time, pretty boring um, childhood, just really regular. A lot of like soccer, mm -hmm. lacrosse, tennis, school plays and things. Mm -hmm. um, but sort of peppered in there were these like odd um, adventures outside of that, you know, to, to, to far-flung places and visiting my, my mom on sets and, um, and seeing a kind of a, a more like sparkly and um, kind of glamorous existence. But yeah. always, always came back home to reality. To yeah. yeah, yeah. Speaking of your family now, I did mention to you before that my husband is a singer and I'm actually a fashion star, so I work in fashion. So we're two creative people yeah. and we have two kids at home. So How you, old? You're so, you're so young. Oh, thank you. You must have been a child no, when you had no, your children. No. Well, they're three and one. Okay, so they're Yeah, so I'm at the beginning, I'm at the yeah. early stages <laughs> and I haven't slept in three years, so... <laughs> I'm glad that you think I look. You do. You look, you look great. You look young. great. I feel like I have slept in three years, but it's, <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore. <laughs> um, but anyway, my point is, yeah. is that we we are two creative parents, mm. and you've come from that similar situation. Your mum is an actor and a very well-known actor, Meryl Streep, mm -hmm. who doesn't know her and she's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But your dad, and in, I just read over my notes and I said your dad is a sculpture in my notes, <laughs> when that's not the case. He's no, not he, a sculpture. But he is kind of like a sculpture himself. He's very much, he's really like the strong and silent type. Okay, um, see, see what yeah. I did there? Yeah, yeah I really you, you went knew. deep. He's not a sculpture, he's a sculptor. He is, he is, yeah. <laughs> So two, two very creative parents and when growing up you go to school you said you had a bit of a normal existence. Mm -hmm. do, do you think your parents did that on purpose to, to make you feel like it was normal for you guys growing up? Both really. I think that and I'm really grateful to them now in hindsight that they that, that was always really a priority that we you know were taught and raised not to put a really to put any kind of a premium on on fame or or anything and sort of more superficial um, we we they wanted us to run around and get dirty and um, you know we, lot, I just remember I spent so much time in the woods um, and not like Hollywood yeah <laughs> um, and I think I'm pretty well adjusted as a result but of course yeah I was um, it was always sort of a surprise and still remains like a surprise um, because because I just it's just my my mom and it, I only really see how um, the magnitude of her success and fame as it's reflected in other people so when she would come to 
and still when she comes to plays or something that I'm in, I see everybody else around me kind of get very buzzy and mm -hmm. very nervous. And um, I'm, I'm like, oh, right, this is different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that I think as a child too, I often think about that with my own kids. Mm. You know, when we're out or whatever and, and people come and say hi to my husband or yeah. I have a photo. Yeah. And they're too young to realise that that's kind of going on. And I often yeah. think, what at what point are they going to understand that, he, you know, he, at, same yeah. for you, did, was there a point where you thought, okay, well, who is this woman? She's well, just my mom. Right, no, there was like, I mean, when I was really young, I, was, I just thought it was awesome because we got to skip all the lines at Disneyland. <laughs> That's a bonus. Which was really they are long. Uh, yeah, they are. that was uh, that was that was pretty awesome. But, <laughs> but then I, th I think it's like as kids get older and they kind of um, learn how to, as I'm sure your kids will, because you're clearly a nice person. They figure out how to empathize, you know, more mm -hmm. and more and more. And so, for me, it was um, I started feeling for my mom in those situations and getting kind of defensive of her and protective. Yeah. of her and uh, I still I still do to a degree so there was there's a bit of like I kind of would you know big tough like you know six-year-old me <laughs> kind of like stand up as her like bodyguard yeah. you know and well, that's so sweet um, yeah. I'm sure she appreciated that <laughs> <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I'm sure she appreciates it now that you're bigger and tougher <laughs> yeah 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 it's a, yeah yeah and so um at some point you in life would have decided that being an actor is what you wanted, although you were only 20 months old when you were in your first movie, is that right? Yeah, but I don't really, I don't really, I don't remember it, no. so I don't think that it really counts. Again? I read that you got which cracked me up a little bit, that you got a positive review in the New York, York Times. And I thought, OK, well, that's an achievement when you're 20 months yeah. old. Well done to thanks, you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, well, seen, I've been a scene stealer. <laughs> I think it's, but it's interesting because what you, um, it's such an elemental or, or primal skill, you know, and it is, there is something really childlike to acting. Um, in that it just harkens back to like playing make, make believe. So it kind of makes sense. You see these like performances that come out of children, like out of the mouths of babes kind yeah. of a thing because they haven't been, um, you know, all the other sort of exterior self-awareness stuff hasn't, hasn't been piled onto mm -hmm. them. So they're kind of able to be really open and expressive, mm -hmm. which is, you know. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. The things they say. <laughs> The things these kids these days. I know it's yeah. shocking. Um, so, as a child, did you know? It, it was it was it just something that you you're like, this is what I want to do. This is my path. Yeah, yeah. At a, especially at the at a young age, um, when I went into high school and in, and college, it kind of it dawned on me that it was a kind of a complicated or more complicated um, decision on my part. <laughs> to, to kind of to, to take it on to yeah. enter into it um, so it wasn't like there was no a dawning or aha kind of moment where I was like this is my dream <laughs> um, it was more like oh shit I really <laughs> like doing this oh, and yeah. so here because we are. It, it is a bit of a juxta because obviously mm -hmm. coming from you know being the daughter of such an incredible actor mm -hmm. um, who obviously obviously can maybe help you out, fast track you, open doors, that sort of thing. Yeah. But then on the other hand, you do want to be your own person and you do want to, you know, yeah. let people know that you are good at this and this is what you love and what you do. It, but I think yeah. finding that balance of using both yeah. and, and obviously being amazing at what you do, but you are the daughter of Yeah, yeah. And so it's, I, you know, I can't, it's certainly, yeah. it's certainly, it's it's open doors mm -hmm. in a, in some ways. You know, she has not herself opened any doors or made any phone calls on my behalf until I guess this yeah. <laughs> that that came that came from her. You know, her desire to 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 do this with me. Um, How nice! Yeah, that's a compliment. Yeah. but I was you know I've been I've been working. Uh, 
pretty steadily for the last 10 years, and, and it was important for me, um, not in any kind of, that I had an agenda to, I don't think that I was ever consciously like, I need to prove that I can do this by like earning my stripes like on the stage, but that's, but that's sort of um, for my own sake, I wanted to feel yeah. if these doors are gonna open, I better, I better show up yeah. really ready, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because yeah. it's not just good enough just to be no, yeah. I agree. No, doesn't, yeah, no, doesn't I, cut it. Yeah, doesn't cut it. No. <laughs> um, now let's talk about this awesome movie, Ricky and the Flash. That oh, you're I'm in. so glad you liked it. No, I really did. It's funny. It's heartwarming. It is like beautiful moments. There's hilariously awkward moments. There's just, yeah. there's so many things in it. There's good music. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's all of those things. I adore you. Your purse is vibrating. Three one seven. Hello. I've been trying to call you. It's Julie, our daughter. Max left her. What? Now your character is Julie. That's my name, my real name, Julie. So I really felt connected. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that was the extent of it. <laughs> no, yeah. I okay. don't think I've ever been as sad as, <laughs> as your character was. Yeah. I'm calling her Jilted Julie. That's Jilted what I'm calling Julie. Her. Yeah, because mm. she was she went through a bit of a rough time. She did. She did. And she wasn't feeling too happy about how things were going in her life, mm. and. Um, goes back to her family mm. to find refuge, to yeah. get better, to feel better. That's and right. then her mother, who is your mother in real life, yeah. um, comes back on the scene after being away for quite a while, yeah. being a musician and living her life. She yeah. comes back to, I guess, try and help you out and make amends and yeah. hopefully <laughs> rebuild the relationship. Is that pretty much the That's, nutshell? I think you did really well there. Thank you. I, don't know that I, I really thought about that. Yeah, that was really, really good. <laughs> Because so, we have the recording of that. Can right? I just play that when See, I need to? <laughs> you guys need me. Um, no, but the, the, there's one amazing scene in the movie where you're, you're out to dinner um, with the family. Mm. So it's your dad who's divorced from your mum, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. your two brothers, one of which is gay and your mum's having a hard time accepting that, that yeah. fact. Yeah. Um, your dad is remarried. The other brother is about to get married to... Prince is perfect, uh, the wedding's looming, you're just depressed out of your mind, your hair's a mess, you've got like just yeah. nothing's, this is like a recipe for disaster, this yeah. dinner is not going well. Here she comes. You choose to stay. I have all my kids in one room. Why aren't you wearing your engagement ring? You two are engaged? Why don't you be honest, Josh, and just tell mom that you don't want her at the wedding? Someone order a mudslide? Yeah, keep them coming. I've never seen so many brilliant, awkward moments in one scene <laughs> of my life. Every, and you are so angry. That's what I love the whole time. Just, you, you're nothing. You're just, you're angry. You're angry at everyone and everyone knows about it. I loved it. Yeah, she's not hiding really anything. No. She's got kind of nothing to lose, which is a, it. a dangerous kind of place to, to be. It is. Or to, be, to be around that, or, you know, in the firing line. No, I know, yeah. because then you really know the truth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and obviously that's not who you are as a person. You don't yeah. seem like an angry person at all. Um, but to, to get in that character, I would, I would find that fun. I would just be like, I'm embracing this, I'm going for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was a great time. I think that most actresses, you know, they, those are the roles that you, you really long for. You know, you, every you just want to play the crazy woman. Yeah. You know, everyone wants to play Ophelia. It's not as interesting to play Juliet. Right. Because um, it is, or it's, it's a great um, and liberating thing to just be able to, to let loose, to be given permission to just kind of like let it all yeah. um, fly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that like, you know, the thing about Julian where she is in her life and having the, the trauma that she's gone through with her marriage ending and having her, everything that she's trusted or known to be, to be true, to have that betray her. And so I think that that sort of, sort of points to like um, what you were saying about how, how she's just like needling people and she's sort of being really nasty, but she's also testing them mm -hmm. just to keep everybody, I think that she thinks that she's keeping everybody honest. You know, and holding holding people accountable for what they say. Yeah. Because it's it's not enough to just to just say something. Mm -hmm. You got to back it up. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Speaking of, you know, sort of a dysfunctional family, not your family, but your fictional family on, yeah. on the movie, as a mother, it is your worst fear of life that you're going to screw up your kids. <laughs> like, and you will. You'll screw them up. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, just, oh. you know, and I'll, but hopefully just in their own special screwed up way. Oh, no, <laughs> no, it's not. It's supposed to make you feel better. <laughs> oh, that, uh, it's a real fear when you have kids. Like you, every decision, you, mm. you don't know if it's right or if it's, you know. If... Yeah, I mean, you can only do your best, you know. Yep. Um, I, think that's, I think that's it. I think you just yeah. do what you think is, is right. And mm. obviously your mother on the movie took a different path and, and didn't really take care of you. And, and your kids. Right. But in real life, I'm sure, you've had a right. completely different experience. That was the, the tricky thing about this movie, is that, you know, their relationship is so fraught, but I, I really, me and my mom get, get along really well, and so, and I love her. So it was kind of very strange to, um, to have to, like, hurl this vitriol and to, to scream at, this, at the person that I, that I care most about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that yeah. would have been hard. <laughs> but that's the great thing about being an actor. And yeah, at, right. If you could play any role, like of all the things, you've done so many things, but if you could just, what would be your ultimate character to play? There, there, are, some, there are so many. There are so many. It's, it's hard. That would be hard yeah. to say. Um, but you'll just know. You yeah. just think, yep. Anna Christie okay. is the one that I've, I'm kind of fixated on right sure. now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, mm. I hope you get to do that. Yeah, me too. I'd like to see it. Thanks. <laughs> um, and now, because I am married to a muso, mm. let's talk about the music in the movie. It's such a pivotal part of the movie. It's this, It's sort of based around your, your fictional mother yeah. and her singing career and... If it did or did not take off one record, I think she made. Um, right. And just the awesome musicians in that band. It, it was so real. Can I just say that being married to a muso, it, it is a world. It is like a, mm. like, there was one scene where she's in, they're going to sleep and she's reading her book and he's in bed with yeah. her boyfriend with the guitar. And I was like, that's it, that's, that's life. That's real. <laughs> that is real. I've been to going to bed with guitars for a long time now. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, that's not bad. It's, it's pretty nice. I wouldn't sometimes. mind some, some dudes just strumming, you know, yeah. on the pillow next to me. But What's bad is the drum machines. In, oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's not great. Yeah, that's, <laughs> is that uh, the alarm in the that, morning? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's hard for a good night's sleep. Yeah. No, but that, I love the music. It's very old yeah. soul and, and yeah. rock and roll. You know, and it was all recorded live. So, you know, they're really, it's really playing and it's happening in real time, which was extraordinary um, and, and so unique, I think, to this film because it's Jonathan Demi, clearly he has a lot of history with music movies and concert films and, mm. you know, he did the Talking Heads documentary. And yeah. so this movie is itself kind of, it is a bit of a concert film yeah. because it's not like you get just snippets of, um, you know, pre-recorded stuff. It's, you see the whole song so I oh, said so that was that was live that was live yeah yeah oh wow yeah realize. so my mom really learned you know how yeah. to play rhythm guitar amazing yeah and that and you're right the band is yeah. those musicians are incredible incredible yeah. Rick Rosas who sadly passed away um right after we finished filming he was Neil Young's bassist and bass guitar player and um Bernie Worrell was a member of P-Funk and yeah. the Talking Heads yeah Anyway, yeah. yeah, legit musos. Yeah, you can Rick Springfield. You can tell. Yeah, I mean, yeah. an Aussie. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we indeed. love him. Yeah, yeah. I had everything in that movie. I'm, I'm a true fan, and true fan of you. Thank you. True fan of your mama too. She's awesome. Yeah, she's um, she's pretty good. Yeah, she's. <laughs> Uh, she's done a few things here and there. You know, promising, just... promising young actress, <laughs> I think. No, but thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Um, cheers. Yeah, cheers to you. Sure, thank, thank you so you. much for joining me. It's been lovely to meet you. You too. You too. This is very civilized. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>